I don't understand why you have to formally invite your parents. You know they're coming. The invites here. I love that she went with Antique Sage. Is that the more expensive one? Our one and only daughter is getting married. Do not talk to me about money right now. I still think they should have just eloped. Marshall, you think I should give him a plus one? He's your man of honor. If he's single, he'll come stag. Otherwise, he'll bring someone. But what if he brings Marie? Welcome to Tampa. Lizard, ah! you're getting married. Can you believe it? Surprise! This place is perfect. No, I, I'm too dignified of a man to be on the beach. I specifically wrote plus one. Anyone but Marie James. I mean, I just don't understand how someone else can book the bridal suite during someone else's wedding. It's me. I'm the bride. Lizzie, we can trade that. No, Marshmallow. He said we can have the better room. Are you? That woman is a disaster. I have to do special brownies for my sister. Just bake as much pot in the batter as possible. Pot. The most important day of our lives, and you were asked to bring anyone, anyone except Marie. <laughs> I can't believe you just stole a trolley. What are you doing with my wedding dress Gosh, on? Get this party started. You better get a boy, dude. What did you put in those brownies? Baby, somebody need an EpiPen? Ow! We should really respect nature. No, wait, no, no, guys, no, no, it's on my hand. Baby. It's on my hand. <laughs> To the bride and groom, raise your glasses to the bride and groom. Y'all should elope. <laughs>
uh, Ashanti's best friend, her Mail of Honor, uh, is played by Jonathan Bennett, and he brings his devious ex-girlfriend to the festivities at the destination wedding. And of course, as any good rom-com should, stuff goes down. <laughs> <laughs> that is the setting for any good movie, you know what I mean? And I, I really, I really found the movie to be at its funniest when it's not trying to be. Yes, you know what I mean? There's exactly. these little moments, specifically between. Uh, any time that Cassandra's doing anything <laughs> is uh is hilarious because she's just really really <laughs> awful. <laughs> yeah, and that's just amazing because I talked to her in the beginning about her character, you know, and what she was about, and then she said, you know, just let me play because I got so many ideas. And once we started, I mean, she just couldn't stop. We just let the camera roll because she always had something crazy coming up. So everyone was watching the monitor with every take with her. And I see why, because honestly, she's just all, uh, like just the, not the nicest person. And it's great to see sometimes, you know, because every good rom-com needs of somebody to dislike because you, you want to like the, you know, your lead characters. And I think that's it's yeah. it, that, that's so well done. And, and you did a great job uh, directing this film. And I can tell you've grown as a director uh, in features because I, I do remember seeing Lottery Ticket and thinking this is definitely from a first time director. This one, you can tell. You learned some lessons and you definitely got a lot better at, at shooting actors, getting the best out of them. You said you let Cassandra cook. You might not have done that on your first picture. You know what I mean? Yeah, because uh, with my first film, I wasn't sure that, you know, there's no handbook that tells you what to do. So I was giving notes upon notes upon notes. And sometimes you just got to let people play. You got to realize mm -hmm. that they're all artists. So coming into this type of film, I realized everyone has something to bring to the table, like we're making a big pot of stew. And you just got to let them bring their ingredients and let them do their thing. And that's when the fun comes out. And and the results are so good. Like I, like I said, the, the film's really enjoyable. And it comes out actually in two days, September 29th. Is that correct? I know. Yes, it's happening. I can't you guys, this movie comes out September 29th. And if you are not checking it out, you, you're, you're missing out because you're going to be missing out on a very, very funny, very lighthearted but also well worth it a uh, piece of romantic entertainment and if you guys know anything about me and you don't know this eric but you're about to find out the romantic comedy is my favorite genre and i i'm somewhat <laughs> of an expert so if i'm pointing you in the direction of this rom-com it's because i think it's very good and very worth your while i want to ask Thank you a couple you so of much. questions uh personal ones having to do with you specifically okay Mm -hmm. The first one, this 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 first question is specific to you because I never get the opportunity to ask this. What is your favorite music video that you've done? Whether it be that, mm. and, and I'm not talking about artistically. I want the best song, your favorite of the songs. Ooh. I think uh, it's, it's a tie. It's a tie. Oh, man, it's a three-way. It's just, all right, I'm going to stop because it'll grow. into It's a 10-way tie. But I think um, Chris Brown with you. Uh, is, is one of my favorites because that was the first time that he really became vulnerable. And I think that was like his first like wide appealing song. And another one that's like maybe a little obscure, it's Fabulous. The rapper, the song is called Breathe. Oh, we know and who Fabulous that, is. We know who Fabulous is. Oh, Fabulous. yeah. Yeah, Fab. I mean, just that song, it just speaks to me. And that luckily that has turned into like a motivation song for athletes teams artists it's like one of those get up and go and get it type songs so those are the two that stand out that from spoke to me as as hot singles it must have been a very difficult thing to acquire that much pink for a fabulous video yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we know he's fond of that color so yeah yeah that's awesome <laughs> no i love it no you, you've had and you've been with chris brown since the his the beginning of his career I'm, I'm, i mean you did the kiss kiss video if i recall yeah, I did his first uh, 10 videos. So I yeah. met him right on Run It when he was, you know, just a teenager. And we just like just kept rocking uh, video after video. And I watched him grow as a person, as an artist. It was awesome. Now, now is other musical connections how you initially met Ashanti? Um, actually, uh, yeah, I, I think so. I worked on a couple of videos with Hype Williams, my uncle, and that's yeah. when I initially met Ashanti and the whole Murder, Inc. family and Irv Gotti and Ja Rule Gotti. and those type of people. Yeah, so, you know, Irv's big personality. So um, it's cool that Ashanti always wanted to act. And it seems like um, 
you know, her vision is, is really, she's really going there. And I've watched her grow from an artist, you know, a singer to really getting into, you know, finding a character and, and finding a role, taking all those things she learned as a singer uh, and bringing it into the acting world. It's really dope. It's always nice when she pops up and stuff because she's been popping up and stuff forever. You know, John Tucker must die. She's in a Resident Evil movie. She always pops up and stuff. And she's so talented, so beautiful. It's just not fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, she's some so awesome. people have everything. She, yeah, I know. That's what I tell her all the time. And we were talking about old videos and, you know, things that she wants to do. But I am so excited to see where she goes from here because now she's an executive producer. You know, she's really going to start like, you know, coming into her own as, as an artist, as an actress. That's going to be fun to watch. Now, the next two questions I ask every guest. And the first one is, who do you got? Who do you look to up to as a person, whether that be in your creative life or personal life? Who are people that you look up to? Uh, you know, I have, I have a list of, you know, of course, my mom, who actually, you know, always like supports me and always like no matter what I do as a kid, it was always like the best thing ever in the world. So like that kept me going. And uh, just icons like, you know, Muhammad Ali and and uh, Bruce Lee and Bob Marley and just, you know, all those people that just laid a groundwork of just just being an individual and, and being the best you can be as a person and what you bring to the table. I love that. I love that. They all have a, all of those examples have one thing in common and we'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. So I want to touch on it. Now, you, the next question is probably the hardest question I'm going to ask you today. I know you're, I you're a director it. and you love music and I love music and you love movies and obviously we love movies. It's what we do. What If you had to only watch two movies for the rest of your life, what two would they be and why? Shoot. This is a tough one, especially being a director. Exactly. Uh, and every time I ask directors, they always do the same, give me the same reaction. Woo! All right. Give me a sec. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I guess Shawshank Redemption is one because I, it's just a, a great A to Z movie, and it and it captures a heart, and it and it, it shows you how to tell a story properly. And uh, oh my gosh, it's so hard. Can I pick five? No, you get two. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone gets two. Uh, we have had Oscar winners on here, and they only get two. <laughs> It's so tough. I, uh, I don't, the Shawshank Redemption and, and, uh, oh, I'm blanking out. You can't do that to me. All right, let me see. Just, just one other one. Uh, let's go the other route. Let's go to, um, let's say the notebook. I know it's crazy. I know it's it crazy. But the notebook has so many layers to it. And people say, oh, that's just a date movie. That's just that's it's a, a movie great for, movie. Oh, no, it's a great movie and it has a lot of layers to it. So I would say, I, yeah, if, if that's all my cards are on the table, let's say Shawshank and the notebook, because the notebook is a jump off point for how do you tell, you know, just a romantic loving story between two people. Yeah, Nick Cassavetes absolutely kills it on that one. That's a that's the best Nicholas Sparks adaptation. That's a great film, and I love that you yeah. picked it. I personally love the Notebook. As mentioned, romantic movies are kind of my thing. I love them. So being able to talk <laughs> to you about your romantic movie was was dope. But yes, you got some great answers there. Now I wanted to mention something. All three of the icons you mentioned earlier, they're all mm -hmm. people of color, mm -hmm. like myself, like yourself. How important is it as a person of color to be telling the stories that are of other people of color? Because I feel like oftentimes we don't get our stories told. How important is it to be telling those stories? That, it, extremely important. I think it's important to tell those type of stories because it'll make people of all colors, races, and creeds to realize we're all just one people. We all have the same stories. We all have the same feelings. We all have the same uh you know, book of life chapters that we all go through, love, loss, you know, we're all the same. And I think that's what um what will bring people in. And people that, that don't agree with each other can at least watch a movie of people of color and say, you know what, you know, I, I am like you, I can relate to you. So I feel like we need more of those to realize we're all just one under the sun, my friend. That's exactly the answer that I was hoping to get because it's so true. We as a people are all one and we need to get along better and do better at being one person. 
And I feel like anytime we, I get to, to speak to a director, particularly a director of color like myself, you know, uh, it's, it's always really awesome to pick their brain and ask them, you know, the why, because I feel like not, not, off, not enough times do we as people recognize others as humans. Yes, you know? very true. And that's another reason why I love this type of cast, because it's an ensemble, multicultural, you know, type. Diverse. Of, a diverse, and, and everybody gets along, and everybody finds a way to, to, to blend and be one together. I love it. I like that you found roles for the writers in the movie. I do like that. That was cool. You had both, uh, you had Austin and Brendan both in the movie. That was cool. And they're so talented. And Brendan was on set with me every single day from startup breakfast until wrap every single day. He was just so into the process. And so it was cool. If you have notes, the writer is right there. He's saying, hey, we could do this note. Hey, we could change this right here. If you need a change, the writers are like standing right there with you. That's always nice to have. Now, I want you to give me a 30 second elevator pitch for why people should check out the plus one when it hits on Friday in theaters, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? 30 seconds why they should check it out. Uh, you should check out the plus one because it's a great romantic comedy, something that everybody can get into. Young, old, white, black, it doesn't matter. It's about two people getting married and what happens right and what happens wrong. So it's fun for everyone. You'll go out, you'll remember it, you'll laugh, you'll cry. And uh, and it's just something that's great to need to see. It's time for the plus one. It's plus one time. I love it. And it has Ashanti. Who doesn't love Ashanti? <laughs> Ashanti, Cedric the Entertainer. You want to go back to Mean Girls, you got Jonathan Bennett, Bennett for all those fans. It's got something for everybody. I and love everybody that. just goes crazy. I love it. And I think you guys should check out the film when it hits your theater near you on Friday. That, With that being said, Eric, what do you want to leave the audience with before I let you go? Would you like to plug your social media? Do you have a message for them? Yeah, basically. All right. So my Instagram is uh, director E white and basically just my advice to anybody, upcoming filmmakers, uh, people that just want to just do something, just go with what, you know, go with what you love and it'll all fall into place. Do what's true to you and it'll all work out. Trust me. I love that. And for film stop reviews, this has been William. That's Eric white director of the plus one. Eric, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much.